Welcome into Extra Time. Shaka Hislop joining us now. And just before we do get into the questions, I heard Shaka saying that he didn't enjoy the delights of the Northeast nightlife. I don't believe it, Shaka. There's no way you didn't go to Tall Trees. I didn't, I didn't partake in the delights. I, I was a very studious <laughs> guy, even back then, T. Might surprise you to know. That's all I said. Mm, not sure I believe you. Okay, <laughs> let's get into these questions then. First up, Kartiko says, has anyone on this panel ever faced such a humiliating thrashing? Craig, I'll start with you. Oh, yeah, I did on my debut for Chelsea. <laughs> but it was... It was it wasn't my fault. I was a teenager and, and, and Bobby Campbell, uh, God rest his soul, he's no longer with us, who was the current Chelsea manager, brought me on at 5-0 down against Nottingham Forest at the City Ground and we lost lost by seven. I think that's a that's a debut and a half. But I, I hold my hands up and say, listen, I, I, it was all over by the time I got on there. I couldn't do anything about that. 7-0 <laughs> though on your debut. Oh, of course, Craig. It was all over once you came on. Frank, yeah. what about you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, the first thing I had to yeah, do it, it, was face... Uh, the first thing I had to do, Frankie, and I think I've told you this before, I had to, face, I had to get in the wall and face a Stuart Pearce free kick. And he must have <laughs> taken about a 40-yard oh. run-up, and he had that growling face that he always has. Like, he's not going to try and swerve it around the wall. He's trying. To, he's going to try and hit it through the wall. Oh, my God. I was frightened. <laughs> Frank, what about uh, you? Yeah, it also happened in my first year, but it was the last game of the season. I was playing for Laval and we knew, we already knew that we would uh, go down in the, in the League 2 and uh, half of the team was already uh, uh, signing for other teams, so they didn't really care, but I was, I was young, it was my maybe 15th games of the season and I wanted to do well, so I was preparing and everything and we lost 8-0 and I got crazy about the players, we didn't care anymore about the clubs. And I got so upset that after 5 nil, I think I smashed one of the players from Lille and I got red carded. <laughs> that was a very good night. <laughs> hey, you were in that Chelsea team that lost 5 nil, 5 nil at Liverpool. You disgraced yourself. Oh, that was 5-1 because I scored a penalty. Uh, but oh, it's true, that was a disgrace as well. <laughs> But we are so many, we don't have the time to uh, enumerate everything because we had a 5 nil at home against Manchester United when we, at the end, we finished 5-3, but it was quite horrible as well. Well, I, well I've got some of them in, during my career. It what, was a long, I, long career. <laughs> what I missed out, Frank, was I was playing that 5-1 defeat at Liverpool as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, Craig saying, oh, I'd only just come on in this humiliating defeat, so it's not my fault. Frank saying, oh, at least I scored a penalty in this one. Shaka, yeah, have you been yeah. involved in a humiliating defeat like this? Well, not as much as eight, but I, I can beat both those stories from, from both Craig and, and Frank. Um, my, my, the final season, my first spell at West Ham, so that had been 2001, 2002, we went to, we had Blackburn away and then Everton away. Um, so we decided to stay in the Northeast between, between the two games. So we played Blackburn, conceded five, went away to Everton, conceded <laughs> seven. What a weekend that was. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, afterwards you went to the big market to celebrate in the Newcastle nightlife, right? Uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, oh yeah. My. I, I should have done that. Uh, the next question uh. actually is for you, Shaka. It's from Frank McManaman. He says, Shaka, how demoralising is it to concede more than five goals in a match as a goalkeeper? Does this have an effect on you in future matches? It does. It, it absolutely does. And, and well, in, in my defence of the story that I just told, that, that season... Um, uh, I, I, I was told in, in, in no uncertain terms that, that I was still plus the requirements at, at, at West Ham by Glenn Roder, who come in and, and bought, bought David James. So I, I had checked out emotionally. But when you, if you look at Ter Stegen's position today, given all that we've discussed, given how highly I've praised Ter Stegen over the last few years, I said that I thought he should have been in goal for Germany ahead of Manuel Neuer at the 2018 World Cup. And now two of them come head to head, and that's the result. It, it, I, it, it's damaging in, in more ways than, than just pride. How unprofessional is that? You were you let 12 goals in in two games and you couldn't <laughs> give us stuff because you told you were getting released. <laughs> and, what about the uh, pay in public? And where was the yeah. goalkeeper's union when he was just talking about Ter Stegen there? Tut, tut. The next one I think yeah. is aimed at me. It's Laj Zoni who says, is it true Messi and Suarez are on their way to Middlesbrough? Craig, you said uh. that Messi should look for a new club. Maybe for us the one. <laughs> Stockton on tees. We've just been talking about it. Just the place for them. They'll love it. 
Very cosmopolitan. They'll fit right in <laughs> yeah. there. Love it in Teesside, they will. Frank, what do you reckon? Uh, Could you see that happening? Uh, of course, <laughs> just for your dream, and I will call you the super tramp. Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a dreamer. <laughs> I'm glad you backed it up with a song there, I have to say. Yeah. Um, Shaka, you know all about the delights of Middlesbrough and its nightlife. Could you see? No, you I see do inside? not. I do not care. <laughs> and I, I admit, I'll confess right now, I have never been to Thorn Trees in my life. Not one. Don't believe you. Boring I'm guy. You. You're just a boring guy. That's the, I, yes. I studied a lot, Frank. I keep trying that's to how it, that, that. That's what he'd like you to believe. Uh, Frank, the next, one, the next one has to be for you. It's Ross Yusuf who says, yeah, when should a team stop playing out from the back? When should a team win playing huh, from the back? Uh, I think after the second long shot. <laughs> like that, <laughs> there is no danger. When I see Ter Stegen getting so stubborn after making so many bad passes and putting his teammates in danger, I mean, you should play a little bit further up, you know, start to play football. At, at our time, it's true that we didn't bother about getting the ball from the goalkeeper and trying to play uh, nicely from the back. We wanted to play to win, uh, you know, some, some, some of the field and going further. And the second ball was very important. Then you started to, to play because you had no worrying whatsoever about being counter-attacked. And I mean, that's crazy. At some, at some point, and we saw that today, first half with Barcelona, that's stupid. You cannot play from your 16-yard box and, and try to take on some players or make passes with, uh, to a friend of yours with two guys behind him. I mean, that's, that's stupid. Craig, Dan says, has Gnabry's rise to stardom shown that Premier League clubs let players go too early? From anonymous at Arsenal and West Brom to one of the best wingers in the world at Bayern. Yeah, I, I I don't know if it's a case of letting players go too early or, or or whether there was an attitude problem with Gnabry, I don't know. Uh, or, or, or there's the other side of the coin, which I think some people just don't realise, is that, is that every player matures mentally and physically at a different pace. And some guys are ready to go in the team at 16, 17, and some are not. I mean, I remember when I went to Chelsea at 16 years old. My goodness, I can't even imagine at 16, 17, getting anywhere near the first team. You know, physically just not ready, never mind mentally. And so everyone develops at a, at a different rate at a different time. And I think it might not be the reason, but arguably you might say that about, about the player in question there because we, we, we never saw any of it uh, when he was in England, or not a lot of it, and he's absolutely magnificent uh, over the last couple of years. There's no doubt about it. All right, next up, we have got this one. It says, did Messi and Simeone make their final appearances for their respective squads? Shaka, what does mm. this say about the direction of La Liga, which has been at the very top for quite some time now? And I'd just like to add that this will be the first time that no Spanish team will be in the Champions League semis for the first time since the 06, 07 season. So you do wonder if there will be a changing of the guards. Well, there, there'll be a changing of the guard for Barcelona on, on the sidelines. Uh, Setien is, is, is out. I, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, I, I still don't feel that Simeone is, is on his way out at, at, at Atletico Madrid, given given their successes and, and given what, given the club and, and their resources uh, and, and who they com continue to, co to compete against. I just don't see who goes in and makes Atletico Madrid better than Diego Simeone. All that being said, I, I, I don't, despite their successes of a few years ago, I don't see them replicating that. And, and if you're Barcelona, I, I don't think you let go of Messi either. And I, I don't think Messi necessarily wants to leave Barca, but he wants to compete. And if they can somehow convince him that they'll spend the money and get the players in to, to make them competitive and kind of put these hidings be behind them, I, I, you convince them to stay. So I, I, I don't think uh, either of the two in question in the tweet uh, are leaving their respective club. I, I just think, K, with uh, with what, and I know they've had success under Simeone, I'm not, not taking that away from them at all. But I think with what they have in terms of a squad, it, it could be a lot better. You know, they have a lot of talented players. We talked about it on the show. 
uh, today. They spent a lot of money. You know, mm-hmm. Thomas Lamar and Joe Felix, to name a few, on the bench. You know, didn't play a part or, or didn't get a start in that semi-final. So I think they could be getting more out of it. And, and in some sense, maybe he did try to change it in terms of the personnel. The back four changed 12 months or so ago and some of the old guard left. But but the tactics never changed. And maybe that's just getting a little bit old. Not in terms of old and you'll not get results with it, but old in terms of asking the players to do the same thing over and over again when actually they, they're actually capable of, of a lot more. Go back to the, the Spanish thing. And I always say this, it's cyclical. And people love to get their knickers in the twist about what's the best league. And that league's better than that. And this league's better than that. And when somebody gets a result, oh, that league's better. It's absolute nonsense. It was only a few years ago, if that, the Premier League teams were struggling in Europe. In fact, it was quite embarrassing. But I said at the time, it's cyclical. And it's the same with Spain. They'll go through this little period. And I would imagine they'll get out of it quite soon. And then their teams will be back up near the top, if not at the top again. And then the English teams, they might have a downturn again, the Italian teams. It it happens. It's not about what's the best league and what's the worst and this this is better than this. These are all great leagues. These are all great teams, but it's cyclical. You can't keep churning out the kind of results that Barcelona and Real Madrid were churning out. You know, three was it three Champions Leagues in a row, something like that. Can't keep that going. And so I think people and I hate it. I don't know about you, but I hate this what's the best league sort of scenario. Because I I think, in general, all these leagues are very good. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.